Welcome back everybody to the Bedrock Guide. Today is Adventure Day and we are headed to the end. But before I head to the end, I need to jump in here to the nether for some supplies. Ow, not lava. Lava is not one of them. I am making a quick stop here in the warped biome to attract the attention of some of these fellows right here. Hey, Mr. Enderman, I'm looking at you. Why, why are you not getting mad? Hello? Oh, he certainly didn't like that. Come here, buddy. Ender pearls, yes. Don't just stand there yelling at me. Come down here and fight. No, I'll come to you. Where'd he go? Nothing. Okay. Oh, he did drop something, just not over there. How did that happen? Minecraft is weird. Let's take a look at the supplies we need for today's adventure. I already had 10 ender pearls, which we're going to put to use here in just a few minutes. Some blaze powder is going to be important. Gunpowder and sugar cane and a boat and some obsidian. I'm going to combine about five ender pearls with blaze powder to get five eyes of ender. I'm going to put one of those eyes of ender back in the crafting table and surround it with obsidian to get an ender chest. And I'm actually going to stick it inside of this ender chest right here and then take this one with me when we go. I'm also going to go ahead and craft all of this sugar cane into paper and convert all of this gunpowder and paper into rockets. This is all the gunpowder I have to my name, so I'm going to have to invest in a gunpowder farm at some point because the way that I use rockets, trust me, these are going to be gone pretty quick. In addition to all those supplies, I'm going to take two full rows of dirt. It does not have to be dirt. It can be any block that you want. I just have an abundance of dirt and so that's what I'm gonna take with me and for now it's just gonna stay in my inventory and then last but not least I'm gonna go over here and grab two full stacks of bottles and toss those in the ender chest as well. Other things that you're gonna want to make sure to take with you when you go to the end for the first time. A bunch of chests, an unbreaking three and a mending book, an anvil and a crafting table. Absolutely do not forget both of these. You're gonna need both and a shield if you want some additional protection and the rest of this we can talk about a little bit later but i think i'm ready to go it's dark that reminds me the other thing i want to take with me is a bed i have no idea where i put that i have an extra bed laying around somewhere but i don't know where i put it where's my bed okay well i'll just take this one i guess oh no ah <laughs> let's get out of here before i destroy my house so, in order to get to the end, you have to have Eyes of Ender, because we absolutely have no idea where the end is in this world. We're flying blind, and I want you to see how to do it, so you can do it too. All you need is an Eye of Ender, and you just toss it. And whichever direction it takes you, that's the direction you want to head. That should break, you can pick it back up, and run a little bit this way for a while. And after you've run for a little ways, you can toss it again, and make sure you're going in the right direction still. Huh. Just be careful, uh, because that can happen sometimes. You're not guaranteed to get your Eye of Ender back when you toss it. It could just poof in the middle of the air, um, and that's not going to be good, because we also need these things to activate the Ender Portal once we get there. Now I think you see why I got 32 Ender Pearls. Okay, let's toss it again. Oh, hello. It's telling me to go here? Where did my eye of ender go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Let me go up here and toss it again. It's saying to go back this way. So the stronghold might honestly not be that far from my village, which looks very cool from here, by the way. Look at that skyline. All right. Tossing it again. And we lost another one. Come on. Okay. So we've hit the point now where this eye of ender is actually not going anywhere. If we throw it, it just kind of sinks into the ground, which to me... That means that we're here at the stronghold and I'm just going to start digging straight down. Make sure when you dig straight down that you do dig two blocks wide so that you can stand in the middle because it is highly possible that there's an open cave somewhere below your feet and you definitely don't want to fall to your death. That just seems like a bad idea. Well, unless I missed something, I don't think we found the stronghold. And yeah, we're, we're at bedrock. 
Nothing. What happened? Okay, I know I'm not crazy. Well, I might be crazy, but I know I've been to the end a bunch of times, and this is not it. I was looking over the Minecraft wiki just now just to make sure that I got everything correct, and I do, but I noticed there is a note that says, Eyes of Ender may point to the incorrect location if the target chunks were generated with a different biomes map in an older version or through different generation settings. I don't think either of those apply because because we started this world at the most recent major version of Minecraft, which is 1.20. And furthermore, I didn't use any weird generation mechanics or anything like that. This is just a totally vanilla world. So I'm, I'm genuinely confused, but I'm not giving up yet. Don't worry. So here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of continuing to throw my eye of Ender that direction, because we know that's a dead end. I'm gonna go the opposite direction in hopes that there's a stronghold this way and that if we get far enough away from that location right there, the eyes of Ender will redirect us to the correct spot. Again, I'm just confused. Oh man, I had to run over 2000 blocks the opposite direction to finally get these eyes of Ender to switch direction, but we're headed to a new location. And hopefully this time it will actually lead to a stronghold. There is a Savannah village over here and it looks like the eye of Ender is leading me over in this direction. Let's confirm. Yup, so far so good. Ah, uh, I think I've lost like 10 of these now, but it's fine. I think we're here. What I'm gonna do is go over to the center of this village. I do see a well. Typically strongholds are below a village and below a well. So I'm gonna toss this Eye of Ender and it should take me right over here. Let's toss it one more time. And yes, I believe we have found the stronghold. Same method. I'm just gonna dig straight down. And one thing I wanna encourage you guys to do is not make the same mistake that I did because I just realized on the way here, I only have 36 pieces of chicken and I didn't bring any backup food. Let's just ignore the fact that I forgot that villages have crops until I started editing this video. How long have I played Minecraft now? Eight years? Ten years? Long enough to know better, but this is great. We just found the stronghold. Oh my goodness, finally. Traveling thousands and thousands of blocks away, we have located the stronghold. And now all there is to do is just wander around until you find the portal room. Libraries are good to have as well, because inside of the library, you might find some enchanted books. Protection three and fire protection four. Ooh, this is good. An armor trim. I don't have this one yet. The rest of this we can come back for later. After exploring the stronghold, eventually you're gonna come across the portal room. And as you can see right at the front of the portal, there's a silverfish spawner and they're incredibly annoying. Normally I break these, but you guys get so mad when I do. So I'm just gonna put a torch right here and keep it from spawning more silverfish, hopefully. The other thing that I like to do, I forgot a water bucket. Blue Jay, where are your brains today? This happens every single time. I always forget stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and toss some dirt in here to get rid of all this lava. And my goodness, it's a good thing we brought extras. Does this not work? Does this not work? Why are they still spawning? I'm gonna quickly set up camp right here to get rid of the things that I don't need for now that I can pick up and take back home with me later. And then I'm gonna make sure that I set my spawn point, but now I'm gonna take 11 more ender pearls and combine them with blaze powder to get a total of 12 eyes of ender. I'm gonna keep some extra ender pearls on me just in case I need them once we get inside. And then one by one, I'm just gonna place these in the portal frame until all 12 are in place and the portal ignites. Oh, yes, we're finally here. Let's go ahead and jump inside the end. Okay, this is nice. We are protected in here for now. I'm gonna poke my head up, but I don't wanna fight the dragon. And you're probably saying, Blue Jay, why do you not wanna fight the dragon? That's kind of what you come to the end for, right? Uh -huh. Wrong. The question of today's video is, can you skip the dragon fight? And the answer is yes, kind of. But we'll get to that later. I'm pretty safe underground here for the time being, so I'm just gonna dig myself out a little storage area where I can put down my ender chest and then grab the second ender chest 
rest out of here because this one is going to get left behind. In the event that something bad happens, I don't really want all of my good gear on me, so it's all going to go in here, including all of my armor. The only thing I'm going to keep right now is a pickaxe. Then from here, I'm just going to dig out straight this direction, being very careful not to fall over the edge because this end island will eventually, uh, no pun intended, it, it will come to an end. And there's absolutely nothing down there except for void and death. So if I fall in there, I'm not coming back and neither is any of my stuff. So we're gonna go pillar out this direction with blocks of dirt. You're probably looking out at the scary vast void and thinking, Blue Jay, what are you doing? Why are you going that way? Land is over there. This is dangerous. Well, yes, it is dangerous. If you've been playing Minecraft for a while, you've probably actually already seen this trick. But if you're new to Minecraft or you've never been to the end before, we are going to skip the dragon fight for today. There are a lot of people that want to come to the end to get the loot but don't want to have to deal with the dragon. So I thought it would be a good idea to mix things up in this series and show you guys the method of how to skip the dragon just in case you don't want to fight it. So this is all there is to it. Crouch, be very slow and place blocks as you go, making sure you don't go too quickly and fall into the void. If you're playing on a server as well, make sure you're going real slow because sometimes blocks can glitch and form ghost blocks that aren't actually there yet and also push you over to the edge into the void, which is very unpleasant. I've done it many times. Oh good, I've got a tail. Don't you come near me. That's the other dangerous thing about doing this is you do get Endermen following you. And if you look at them, you've got very little reaction time before you fall in. You know how they say never dig straight down? Always look straight down when you're in the end or bring a jack-o'-lantern to put on your head. Oh, that's a beautiful sight right there. If I look back, we're pretty far away from the main island, but I can start seeing some islands coming into view off in the distance. We're still a few hundred blocks away, but it's good to see land. The main island is completely gone now. We're far enough away that it's not even in winter distance anymore. And I've got three big islands that I'm looking at straight away, but we're still not there. I mean, I know we're getting closer, but it sure doesn't feel like it. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, thank you. Oh my goodness, we made it. Woo! Oh boy, my thumb. My thumb is so sore from mashing down on the crouch button for like 15 minutes straight. Worth it. Now, before I look at any of these fine fellows over here, the Endermen, I'm gonna make sure to get my Ender chest and throw my armor back on first thing. And I'm ready to start hunting for an end city. And I seem to have found one right over there. Yes, we're not even that far away. Okay, do any of these islands connect? I don't believe that they do, but that's not a problem. You could do one of two things. You can either pillar out again, but since this island is not too far away, I'm gonna take a handy dandy ender pearl and just kind of toss it up in the air and hope it lands somewhere on the middle of the island and I'm gonna look down so that I don't look at anybody upon landing. That wasn't too bad, we made it. Ooh, but that city is a little bit farther away than I expected it to be, but it has exactly what I'm looking for. That right there is the prize, the pirate ship of the end, oh boy. And I think we're going to pillar out. After we get to that pirate ship, this is not going to be a problem anymore. But for now, hang in there, thumb. It's time to crouch again. Okay, we're back on land again. Oh, there's one more gap. Okay, it's fine. And now I believe we have reached the island that this city is on. Yeah, no more gaps. Okay, we're good. If you're playing on a device that has a lower render distance, then you're probably not going to be able to see like that city and that city. But if you can bump up your render distance as high as possible, it's always a good thing to do because you're gonna find more loot that way and spend less time traveling around. In cities are great for three different things. You can see one of them on the side of the building right here. This is a shulker. Shulkers will fire these shulker bullets. And if you get hit by one, not only will you take damage, but you're gonna start levitating, which honestly might not be a bad thing to get away from this guy. Stop it, leave me alone. If you brought a shield with you, which I would recommend, if you crouch, the shulker bullet will actually not deal the damage to you, but you'll still get the levitation effect. So you're still gonna have to be careful with floating up in the air, but at least you won't be taking damage every time you turn around. When you defeat a shulker, yes, we got one. You will get a shulker shell. I can't do anything with this just yet because I need to find another one, but I'll keep exploring this tower and I already see one floating up there at the top of the ceiling. Oh man, he didn't give me one either, rude. 
That's okay, we'll explore this next section over here. And I already see another shulker hanging out right here on the side of the building, and there it is! We got two more shulker shells, yes! Now that I've got some shulker shells, I can take my crafting table and I can place a chest in the middle of the crafting table and then a shulker shell right here and a shulker shell right here to craft a shulker box. Shulker boxes are unlike any other storage device in the game because I can take something like rockets and I can place them inside of a shulker box and then I can break it and the inventory does not go flying all over the place like a regular chest. And even better, I can take these shulker boxes and put them in my inventory or put them in the ender chest for safekeeping and this is 27 stacks of items in one stack of the ender chest. Life is about to get so much better for me. I'm gonna keep a couple of these shulker boxes on me because the next thing that we're gonna find in an in city is the loot chest. There could be one, there could be multiple, and there could be some things that you're gonna wanna take with you like a diamond mending sword. Okay, not bad. Beetroot seeds I don't really need. Iron gear, don't really need so I'll just leave this stuff here. And then I also get a free ender chest. So I'm gonna put this one right here and go ahead and take that with me. There are a couple of different methods to raiding an in-city and what I'm doing right now is considered the uh, bottom to top method, which basically means I go one wing at a time, exploring from the bottom to the top. And once I've cleared that area, I'll go on to the next. And speaking of going on to the next, here we are. I have located the pirate ship. And the first time you're here is always the scariest because like we did on the end islands below, there are two options to get over to the pirate ship. So you can either pillar forward like we were doing or the risky way that I like to do is to take an ender pearl, uh, we'll get the shield out of the way so I can actually see where I'm aiming and I'll aim the crosshairs just a little bit above the mast of the ship. And if I do this correctly, I should land directly on the ladder. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, throw. Okay. Oh, okay, I fell, but I fell on the ladder. That's fine. We're good. Now. I'm gonna go in here. There is a brewing stand, which we'll grab in a minute. This is what I'm interested in right here. There's more loot chests, there's more shulkers, but more importantly, what's behind the shulker is the big prize of the end. That is the elytra. I'm gonna pop the elytra off the item frame and we'll break the item frame too. I'll go ahead and take that and that. We'll take pretty much everything in here. And this right here is exactly why I told you to bring the anvil and the unbreaking and mending books because I'm going to straight out of the gate to take my elytra and apply a mending book to it. And then I'm gonna take the mending elytra and apply an unbreaking three book to it. And these are the only two enchantments that you can have on your elytra, but trust me, it absolutely is worth it. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and put my elytra on and you can use the elytra in two different ways. First, you can just jump and then jump again and glide. Oh, it's amazing but eventually you're gonna run out of steam. That's where these things come in. Firework rockets propel you forward so that you can keep flying infinitely, or at least until you run out of rockets. Here's another place that the elytra comes in handy. When you lose the levitation effect, you wanna open your wings so you don't splat into the ground, especially if you get hit multiple times or are floating real high. Elytra will save your life many, many times. All right, this is the last shulker in the city and he teleported away. And here's everything that I got from this city. One helmet, one chest plate, one elytra, which we have used a couple of times. One sword, some various ingots. This stuff I brought with me, so that doesn't really count. Six shulker shells left over after I've crafted a bunch of shulker boxes already. Plus all of these random blocks minus the dirt that I brought with me. That's not bad. This is a pretty average size city. It's not too small, but it's not a large one either. Let's see what else I can get. And now the second method for end raiding. First, we did the bottom to top method. This is going to be the top to bottom method. And we actually start right in the middle with the pirate ship because it's nice to have more than one elytra just in case something bad happens. Ooh, diamonds. 
Not mad about that. Ooh, even more diamonds. And yes, the spire armor trim. There is only one armor trim to be found in the end. Technically, there's two end themed armor trims, but we found the other one in the stronghold. This spire armor trim is the only armor trim to be found at this time in the end. And now we don't have to find another one. If we do, it's just bonus. Okay, so the top to bottom method is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna go from the top of the city downward and I find this method a whole lot easier. It's always easier to attack something from above than below, especially because we have this kind of thing going on in this city. This is one of the biggest shulker rooms in any end city that you're gonna find and I would not suggest coming in here without a chest plate. So with your chest plate and your shield in hand, just start tackling these guys one at a time. If you need to, try to use a bow, but again, I've got flame on my bow and it might cause some of them to teleport. Not to mention, we're not getting the looting effect from using the bow. So just try to use that sparingly and not for every shulker that you go after. Oh man, this would be the perfect pick if it weren't for the curse of vanishing. My goodness, I'm taking it anyway. And here's all the loot from just the second city. I think we made out pretty good. And honestly, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, I did mention earlier in the episode that I did forget to bring extra food. That is not a big problem, but I do want to save this chicken for now. So we have these large purple stalks here on the islands. This is chorus fruit. If you break the chorus fruit, you're going to get chorus fruit drops. You have to be a little careful with how quickly you eat chorus fruit because... <laughs> It teleports you and be careful with where you're teleporting. Don't be moving while you're eating this stuff. Stand still, let it teleport you and then look around to get your bearings. You definitely don't wanna be walking off any cliffs. Now that I've raided a couple of end cities, I kinda wanna do some more, but this is where I'm gonna end off the episode. I don't wanna end off the episode before giving you one last tip because this episode was all about skipping the ender dragon. The only problem with that is there are only two ways to get home. One of them is defeating the ender dragon, which opens the portal back up and we'll talk about that in the next episode or two that way that's how you get home so if that's the method that you choose and you truly want to skip the ender dragon all you got to do is collect all of your belongings into shulker boxes toss it all in the ender chest and then make the plunge into the void that'll take you back to your spawn point which hopefully if you brought a bed that's where it's gonna be but that's it if you don't want to defeat the dragon you're gonna have to defeat yourself the other thing you're gonna want to make sure to have is another ender chest in the overworld otherwise all your gear is locked away until you can get your hands on another ender chest. It'll basically be like starting over. Don't do that. But hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you learned a little bit more about the end and how to skip the ender dragon. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you do all the things you know to do. Like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And hey, don't go anywhere. There's more Bedrock Guide content on the way.